Welcome everyone. This is rather an impromptu video for me. Today is Thursday and I've been stuck in my gallery all day long, which is normal, no problem with that, but it's been such a hot day and uh, we're in the middle of a heat wave down here in Kent and it's scheduled to get even worse tomorrow and possibly even Saturday. But having been in there all day editing, as I always do, uh, editing for next week's YouTube and for my patrons, I decided that after my meal tonight I would come out. It's such a wonderful evening and I felt that it would be wasted sitting at a computer. So I shall make up for that time later, <laughs> he says. I've got to. Um, but I just want to get out and uh, do a little bit of uh, sketching and I will probably use the Ahab pens tonight in my sketchbook and just go and set up over there somewhere and draw a little bit of a scene of the, uh, well, the coastline as it were, such as it is here and um, just enjoy that for an hour and uh, bring you along with me and maybe even get the drone up if we're lucky. So I'll catch you all soon. I'm going to walk along a little bit further and get set up and we get going. Take care. Okay, so as I did the other day, I'm traveling very light. I have just this hold all and inside it I have my blocks and I have my pens and I have my watercolor. And tonight all I'm going to be doing is a quick study in my Stillman and Burns sketchbook and carrying on from the last one, of course, which we did. And I'm just going to work away in here. So I'm going to use this pretty much as a block to rest on. I think it's quite nice to do that. I'm going to get the pen of choice out tonight, which I think I've already said is going to be one of the Ahabs. So let's choose one of those. There we go. And these can be obtained from um, Pure Pens in England, purepens.com, and they are a noodler pen. Okay, so let's just put that down there. We will come back to this when we decide to do a um, wash over the top. But I'm just gonna literally draw with this. Okay, now unlike the pens that I was using on the other sketches, this one is just a straight nib. It is not having anything to do with um, the Fude type nib where it turns up, this is just a straight nib. What I'm trying to do here is just look at the situation ahead of me my horizon line which sort of is going away from me to a point it's way over here somewhere somewhere like that is looking around the little stone area with the water tower over there probably a little smaller than that in fairness coming around this way i'm using very scratchy drawing lines and i'm just going to allow that to come all the way through and then the beach starts to curve not as acutely as that but it comes across here like that towards me and as it does that it also rises above so it's an acute angle which disappears smaller and smaller and smaller all the way through here until it sort of ends up almost into nothing when it comes to the actual line it's just a nice line through there we can make sense of that we have got our seawall going all the way down 
and somewhere say around this area is Dimchurch this is where I was born and bred and you can't see too much of individual buildings I'm not even going to try and suggest those I'm just going to scratch away scribble and suggest that there are lots of things going on at that point hopefully we can get that looking about right and then we've got the top of the seawall just going to bring that through you've got the top here which I've just put in and then we have got the sort of area the platform where people would be walking upon and of course that's getting wider as it's coming towards us as well and around here say just looking at the sort of distances we've got several sets of stairs coming down there are three and I can see at that point there and all of this area all of this area all the way up through here all the way down through here is where I walk my dog almost every day um, not every day sometimes he's a little bit sore from playing and running he's getting a bit older now I have to be aware of that there is a sea a uh, slipway and there is one above it coming this way so stuff comes down the wall here onto the platform and then can come down this one here almost end on to me not quite but almost so we've got a little flat edge there where it touches the sand and then we've got the rest of the wall here we have got a dark area where the water level has created all the weed on the steps these are a mass of steps that go up to this platform here several layers of steps that were put in as uh, more recent sea defenses and a very very expensive um, rebuild of the local mass sea defenses but they were needed and they do ensure that uh, the rising sea waters through uh, sadly through um, environmental issues and of course the uh, depletion of the ozone and all these horrible things that man has done to the planet in the recent years uh, has cost the economies of many countries not only our own but others as well to have to take these extra steps to reinforce the sea defenses against rising waters and that is just one very small aspect of um, saving the planet that no one seems to be taking enough care of I don't think anyway I don't want to get into that it's a massive subject and we each of us have our own thoughts and opinions I know I have mine uh, anyway enough of that <laughs> I don't want any written letters about the subject I know it's very contentious for some and um, it's, it's blindingly obvious to many anyway enough let's carry on just doing a, a little quick outline through here and the trees come up just before the slipway there they start to come up a big clump of them here and there's a couple of chimneys there you can just see there's houses down behind the sea wall another large area of trees over here a couple of lines of them sort of sweeping back in their height and then we have uh taking that top of that wall through we have a couple of uh, buildings a couple of little uh, angles with roofs a couple of chimney sets there's uh sort of two or three very close together here like that put those in one large one here which is got a big angle to a roof and then that goes back and so on they just keep coming this way all right so that's enough of that we have a couple of degrees of sort of penetration of seaweed up where it's sort of high tide all the time comes up and we've got several bits of green growth through here these steps at this point are very very slippery and um, people have sort of broken limbs and bones on uh, falling foul of those over the last few years but the council do do a very good job of trying to keep them clear in terms of the steps they don't keep the actual areas between steps clear but where they have got steps there's one just off camera here and every so often they've got steps coming down and they do keep those uh, protected and clear of very slippery weed areas that uh, yeah cause an awful lot a couple of posts down there and a little bit more through here 
lots of information and the information excuse the term gets very very sketchy at this point because we've got so much happening now where i put that there is way out <laughs> there you go i'm going to turn that into a bit of a tree something else going on through there lots of bits of information as we come this way and a large building down through there i think it's a new building that's gone up or a new series of buildings houses and of course as we go further away our trees unlike here which are a lot higher are much lower in the distance and of course i'm trying to make the pen a little scratchy because the aerial perspective is causing a lot of moisture in the air a lot of mist coming through and so these are delicate they are almost lost now i do intend to get that little tower in further along here so where i put it there as i said is way off there is so much more going on through the back here and the tower to be truthful even here is a little bit too far around but i think we'll live with that i'm quite happy with that so there we go we've got our water tower in at little stone and that pretty much if you can see that and make sense of that is our coastline to where i live just bring that around more gently now what we do have is a whole raft and i'm looking at them sort of coming this way just going to put a tentative mark so far where you see them on mass and these are the groin system of protection now what this these do is they allow the water to come in and out without shifting all the sand to a, and depositing it somewhere else where it shouldn't be the the waters are obviously shifting and moving now i'm just trying to suggest actually i should have used the food only for this and got a thicker line but not to worry happy at that because because there are so many groin lines at this point onwards they look like an almost solid black mark through there i'm going to put those in and of course you do see a little more separation through here and they sort of start to break up into little posts and they end just before the uh, breakers now i'm not going to try and put them all in there are so many lines take it from me they are all there <laughs> you can make of that as you will i'm just going to put these ones in they also give you a sense of the angle of the shelving beach now dim church has by many many years been a fun destination for londoners and other people um, before i was born and obviously that still goes on 150 years later uh, <laughs> you can do the maths and uh, yes yeah, so anyway there are many of these and uh, they are renewed at times you can go to other beaches and other places and see more of them more versions of them these just happen to be the ones that we have i don't know how old these are i thought that some of these were actually um replaced at some point in the past not sure how old but anyway at the end of some of them there is a depth marker post now that extends up here and down as a thicker post they've got a thick base to them which you can tell the water level comes out right up here somewhere because you can see you've got a lovely red post here and a basket on top like that and then it's dark where it's covered in seaweed and growth and other planting and other stuff okay so we've got another one down there much further away and then the next one and they're just getting smaller and tinier you can barely see them way off down there like that that gives you a nice directional line all the way out through there but the next one the one that's just in front of me is way over here somewhere and i can't even put it on the um picture because it is way over there as such as the curvature of the bay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in the next set of groins which is these groins do have side wooden plates which you will see they're barrier boards but some of them get so buried in sand that all you see 
is the tops of some of the posts. You don't even see all of them. Sometimes there's so much sand there that they actually miss. They get buried. They're just barely visible. And that may be just one line of them. And then you come to the next one and you start bringing that a little more forward. And you might see a little more of this one. Let's just bring it down a little bit more. You might see a little more of this one. Like that. That. And the spacing should get a little further apart the closer these come to you. Now I'm not probably drawing exact. I'm not even looking at them. I know them so well that they are just little scribbles, just indications that we have these groins in place. But as we come closer, then the next set may be here. And it's trying to show you the curvature of our bay. And let's put the next one here. But now this one is into a bit of, you can, you can see here, I don't want to put too much in, but you can actually see that there is a, a bay, there is a, a bar, the bottom of a bar. This is thicker sand, this comes down to uh, what would have been an estuary at some point um, during the course of the tide going out, momentary estuary, allowing water to go and then another bank of sand where it's a little higher but where that goes into this area here you can actually see some of those boards before that sand starts to come up like that you start to see some of the boards that are buried further along so I'm going to blacken those out and then I'm going to put another post in there and that's really how these are built like that take that through you have another one there and then once more they start to be buried by the sand not in all cases and you can see back up on this one here that I'm going to put in a little bit of a dark line where some of those boards are just making themselves visible once again on that line there we go take this line all the way up I don't know what's happening the sun's disappearing behind clouds that's a shame I wasn't expecting that. I thought we had some for the rest of the evening. Which will bring me on to another topic very, very shortly. I'm going to take that all the way up there. So we're plotting all of these lovely groins. Now, as I said to you, I can't put this one with a big post in it. I would have loved to, but that one will have to do the job for me. Here, though, we're going to have another line of um, groin. I'm going to bring in... Now, we can see a lot of these boards on this one. I'm going to hold that through there like that and I'm going to put that on and in theory my my big post will be about there but I can't put it in to be fair and put another groin post in there another one in there and then then the sand is coming up putting another post in there it's just been buried by the sand at that point but then there's a new height and another set of boards is still there and it's been put in so you get to see some more now if i was being very accurate with the drawing and the painting i would indeed be putting lights and shadows on this as this is going up towards the light here and you get a light side and a dark side to some of these groins especially those that are very much closer to you okay they may get buried again in the sand there and maybe here and then there may be another board showing up. All the sand is just a little bit of a dip there. And it happens. The sand is constantly moving. And the depths, though indeed of recent years, uh, the Environment Agency has been sending teams of people here every few months. And they take uh, soundings. They take, um, I don't know what the devices are, but they sort of run all over the beach and they walk all over the beach and they're taking tons and tons of computer readings and soundings to try and map the movement of the sands here and to see what um, is happening, whether there should be cause for concern long term or not. Okay, now I think we have our sketch. All right. So there you go. I'm going to stop it there at the moment. I'm just going to put the pen away. Think about the colors that I want to use. 
and we're just going to put a very quick wash on. I'm not going to do too much. I was hoping the sun hadn't disappeared, but it has. It's literally gone in. Um, well, I say it's gone in. It's gone behind a massive mackerel cloud. Let me, if I can swing around and just show you that. That is what's happened to the sun, just very quickly. So it's sort of shrouded us into a sort of dim light. All the beautiful contrast that I was looking for up through here has all gone. It's all just flat one color. So <laughs> that's rather disappointing to be fair. <laughs> I had such expectations earlier. It may Okay, now the sky has gone a little bit moody so what I want to try and do I'm going to use some of that I'm going to put some nice um, ochre in the very bottom of the wash I'm going to come in here it's quite warm through the base here there's very very quick study it's getting colder and the light is fading very fast so I would like to put in that lovely ochre color and I'm going to mess that up in a moment with some uh, violet colours. I just want to get the idea because it's got a warmth to the sky that actually has got an awful lot of... Um, I probably should wait, but it's got a little bit... No, that's the wrong colour. Where are we? There we are. Got some lovely neutral tint into there. And I'm just going to bang actually some neutral tint and some indigo. Why not? Let's just suggest our lovely cloud through here. And I'm going to take that through. Now, while this cloud uh, settles down, as it were, and I'm holding that brush too, I don't need to. Let's just try and support this in the bag. I've got to find a device that I can actually hold everything on a bit of a slate or pallet sort of thing and um, see if I can't do a better job but it's trying to keep everything in shot so that you can see as well as here what I'm suggesting doing now that's gone a little bit blue so let's come back in with a bit of magenta and that's gone too heavy there we go all best laid plans aren't they anyway I'm gonna let that settle down because it isn't actually stormy but the cloud has got a little bit what I would call quite dull whole thing i just want to suggest we've got this lovely cloud and this lovely light behind the cloud and we've got a beautiful sort of mustardy yellow color through here i've lost a little bit because the excess water that come down so what i'm going to try and do is just bring in a little color of orange and some of the yellow ochre and just suggest the sand now the sand is going to have a lot of grey in it because it is quite honestly lost all the light of the evening.
Okay everybody, let's get back to it. Now, this has dried off quite nicely and while it was doing so, I had a little bit of fun playing around with the drone and uh, getting a bit of B-roll, a bit of footage. But uh, this has really happened quite nicely. What I'm gonna do is just flick the camera up and show you as it is now. And it's not a million miles away from it. Let's have a look. You can see that the sky there is sort of diminishing in light value but it's got those lovely violet uh, accents to it and that lovely yellow ochre and even going down to a red as the sun is going down so what i'm going to do is go down to a smaller brush there's a smaller round just pick up a bit of water i want to make a little bit of a ultramarine color a little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of alizarin in there just make a bit of a purple, may even be, a, that's probably a little aggressive. Let's come back with a bit more blue. I don't want it too weak, but I don't want it too strong. I just want to put in a suggestion through here of all that sort of coastline way off in the distance there. And just putting a very general cool color. It was a lot more than this earlier. In fact, it's not that far off now, but it really has got a lovely cool accents to it as we go down the mist has sort of disappeared a little bit from the area but generally we still have got a lot of cool colors in here now as that comes round it gets a bit paler so i'm going to like lift that off with a brush take that out almost to a pale wash color there and i think that works quite nice i've got to let that area dry but while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to introduce a little bit of aureole into that dark. Maybe even come in with some really dark, greeny, grungy colours. Now I've picked up a bit of red with that. That's the alizarin. A little bit of indigo into that, making a dirty colour green. And to me, that's really what we've got along the edge or the bottom part of the um, slipway. Uh, not the slipway, the sort of steps here. And they isolate, they stop obviously at the bottom of the steps. You go all the way around here, just trying to quickly freehand that shape in and balance everything else. But I think you get the idea. Now what I do want to do is just drop in maybe a little bit of red. Just a little bit of red, maybe a bit of blue in there too. Let's come up here and make a fresh pot of color it's actually a lot more blue a bit more indigo into that I'm trying to pick the right color out i've got a lot of green in my brush so maybe i should just clean it up a little bit put that blue in there somewhere where i want it to be because we've got some dark that's sort of pushing at the top of this all the way through there like that Hopefully that will sort of push down. I'm going to make it a little wetter. And so it sort of wants to bleed into the green and push that green down. That's a little bit too extreme on the blue, to be fair. But maybe the clean water, dampness in the brush, just lift that back ever so slightly. Just wanted to try and create a second layer of dark, but the top layer being cooler than the sort of bottom layer. I don't know if I've actually got that, but it's probably a little closer to that than, than not, to be fair. I'm gonna come in here with a bit more red and I'm gonna drop that into the base of this green color because it is wet at that point. The tide has gone out, but it is quite wet. Right at the bottom, there's an awful lot of seaweed that's deposited. Just a little bit too messed up there, but that's not so bad, I'm not too worried about that. As regards to the slipway itself and the steps, I don't really want to put too much of a color in there. I'm going to come in with a very, very weak color just to continue the idea on that there is a little color in that concrete, as it were, in the slipway too. Not much, just a mere slight staining. There is so much more in here I'd love to do. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to come in with some lovely Venetian red or indian red not venetian red i'm sorry and i'm just going to bring in here and i'm going to suggest there is some darker sand out here that is sort of 
edged with you know, little sandbars and little eddies of water take some of that up through there and try and accentuate the cooler colors that I left earlier to suggest that we've got the edge of a sandbank here and then we have the waters sort of mingling in and out now to make them reinforce that let's just lose some of this hard edge let's just take some of that away some of that off of there and around there just confuse the edges a little bit more make them less important and that will be fine i think we've just sort of got away with that we've suggested even if we haven't got it all the way up i don't know if we can actually drag a little bit off there this brush isn't very strong i might just lift a little bit out i'm drying it on my trousers as i go and just rubbing the brush off trying to lift some of that paint back up through there it's not that successful we've got a bit of it out of it okay i hope you can get that i hope that looks okay i'm not going to do too much here there would have been a fantastic situation earlier with some of the lovely um set up with light and shades and and uh, what have you but we can't do that so what i'm going to do now is just pop in here we've got very little or no light on some of these trees up in here and this big one in here just to finish this area off and one or two taps down through here of more trees along the top of the seawall there now the bottom of them should be a nice crisp edge of course because they are dark trees but they're disappearing behind a very straight edged wall so we don't want sort of lots of different undulations really if we can get away with that take that try and keep it nice and straight now while i am on this area i'm going to put in a little bit of red a little bit of indian red too very dull light i'm just going to bring that up a little bit towards the camera and just pop in a couple of roofs a couple of little suggestions of houses that we had earlier that large one there and a bit of roof going off and of course a couple of the chimney pots like that and a couple of small ones there just to indicate that we've got a house there and a house further up here too as for dim church itself well you can't see too much down there there is of course a few areas here now i'm bringing this up to work a lot closer and i'm hoping that this is yet another idea i'm experimenting with you guys <laughs> gotta be fair i'm trying all different camera angles out and try and set it up in different ways so that eventually i'm going to find a good way of filming these little studies uh, outside for you so that they mean something and you can follow them quite easily hopefully that's okay a couple of little bits down through there just come back in with a little bit of that green it is dull and it's actually getting a lot bluer so let's put in kind of a bit grungy there let's put a bit of ultramarine blue into our color and let's just bring in a slightly stronger suggestion of these trees way down on there there we are i think i think you know we've probably done enough for our sketching tonight one thing I haven't done, I will just put that in. I'm just going to put in a little bit of dull red. Now they do look quite bright reds, but they're not. They're tempered. So let's do the same. Let's just put in our little mast of red coming down here. A little red basket on top. It is red. You can see it's red, but you can't see how bright that is. You would do had you come up here during the course of the daytime. But we are not there in that situation. There we are. That That's it, that's me done. Just checking that I haven't left anything on the ground that I shouldn't do, leaving it pretty much as I found it. Catch you all later, bye bye.
Okay, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a heap of fun doing that, and I'm sure you got something from it to move on with in your own work. Now, uh, I did say at the start it was a bit of an experiment, and that's true. I am trying to find the best way to film sketchbook doodles, and I think tonight I got a lot closer to it. I think it was a lot better than ones I've done in the past, but I will keep trying to do more in the future. But that all said and done, if you've got any thoughts on it, put it in the comments section. I love to read them. And while we're on about that, then please, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Just click that bell icon and the notification tabs, and that will tell you each time I upload a new video, which is normally every Friday at 3 p.m. And if you've got any thoughts on anything, and if you want to see more of this type of video, then put them in the comments section. I'll read them, I'll answer them, and it's fantastic. But every time you interact and support my channel, it helps it grow. So please get involved and subscribe and help it grow. That would be fantastic. And if you want even more, if you want to reach out and learn even more from me, then look at my Patreon. Paul Apps, artist, Patreon. Uh, there's so much going on there, and you can get so much from it. Check out the tiers, and if you want to get involved, I'd love to welcome you as my latest patron and whilst we're on that subject let me just say a big big thank you to all my existing patrons without your guys without your support of my work I wouldn't be able to keep doing these videos for everybody to enjoy and learn from so thank you very much each and every one of you you are ace and treasured <laughs> thank you so much and as I say um, if you're not then consider becoming a patron and getting so much more out of what I create so until another time, until the next time, take care everybody, have fun, stay safe, enjoy your painting wherever you are. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. I'm going to go back home now, have a coffee, maybe a beer, <laughs> and I'm going to watch some telly. Catch you all soon. Bye bye. <laughs>to the day. Oh, I'm boring myself already. Start again then. It's Thursday evening. Every Thursday evening I'm in my gallery. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back. This is rather an impromptu video. Um, I've been stuck in... in <laughs> start again then. Hi everybody, welcome back. Well, it's... Hi everybody, well this is rather an impromptu video and... Hi everybody, well... Mm -hmm. Okay guys, well I had a whole heap of fun doing that. I'm sure you got something around it. <laughs> Start again.